my friends, this is Deepak Chopra and we're continuing our conversations with uh, amazing people who write amazing books. And so today is a very special guest. His name is Machiel Clerk. Did I pronounce it correct? It's uh, surprisingly well, Deepak. Okay, and the book is called Dream Guidance, Connecting to the Soul Through Dream Incubation. And... Uh, I have a bunch of questions, and then we can also uh, maybe uh, dis discuss something even beyond uh, some of the ideas here. But uh, first of all, I read your book, uh, and I was very uh, happy to get lots of insights from the book. And uh, I just uh, will go for a few questions uh, uh, first, and then... Uh, uh, we'll go into a little bit about your background and some other ideas later. But I think for our audience, the best thing is first we go with the practical. So you say that you have a actionable five-step process to help you have an incubation dream, a dream that reveals the answer to your question. So please explain. Yes, I uh, think that... Uh... Uh, the world of imagination is uh, is uh, uh, very uh, interested in uh, in helping and educating when we ask it. So this old idea that uh, ask and you shall receive uh, has some merit. Naturally, there are some uh, limitations to it. It's not uh, like a, uh, the wish fulfilling genie that just gives whatever uh, you want. Yet there are ways that uh, in waking life, but also in the dream. We can ask the dream for uh, support, guidance in our life, for health or uh, vocation or finding a relationship. And uh, the dream will, uh, will help to do that. And uh, these five steps describe, based on all kinds of ancient practices, how we can do that. Let's uh, go through the five steps. Yes, briefly, that is, uh, first, you want to identify uh, the issue that is uh, alive for, uh, for, uh, for yourself. And usually it's, uh, the easiest thing just is take a piece of uh, paper and write down the first thing that comes up. Ask yourself, uh, what, uh, what would I like to know? What is uh, my uh, challenge today? And your own uh, psyche will produce uh, usually the most pressing element. And the most pressing element is also uh, the most important thing because uh, pressure, uh, energy around it, is one of the elements that, uh, that influences uh, the success of this technique. So if I would ask, uh, what did my neighbor have for dinner last night? Uh, not, not a lot of energy around it, but uh, how can I be uh, a more uh, loving person or how can I grow my business? If those are uh, questions that I have, really relevant. Step two, uh, formulate a question well. And that uh, is uh, make sure it's an open-ended question so that the dream can answer in its own way. Uh, make sure you answer one question, ask one question at a time, um, and, uh, uh, and then write it down. Step three is uh, engage in a ritual. And actually the whole process is kind of a ritual, but a ritual is, an, uh, is, is, is a way of engaging with uh, the larger awareness and just showing respect and putting time so that again, that pressure gets uh, gets uh, more dense and the denser the pressure is the more likely uh, you will have an, uh, an helpful dream then you go to bed hopefully you sleep uh, have a dream and then upon waking write down the dream because dreams have a tendency to evaporate and then uh, uh, work the dream and see uh, how it fits so it's in a nutshell my very special guest is Machiel Clerk, and his book is called Dream Guidance, Connecting to the Soul Through Dream Incubation. And then at the end of the book, uh, actually, our uh, wonderful author uh, gives some guidance on questions to ask. So he has uh, divided these questions into various categories love and relationships how do i secure develop a secure attachment can you dream show me my abandoned self what can i do to find my soulmate how can i become a trap for love rumi how can i be more vulnerable in my life 
etc etc then also he goes on to life path what do i need to focus on most right now dreaming can you show me something that is important for me to see and know and then uh, there's a whole uh, bunch of questions on personal growth what is the source of my anger what is the reason for my failing in a particular endeavor the questions to ask about health what is one type of food that you recommend that i add or continue in my diet how can i improve my health questions on finances what kind of value do i place on my financial worth what is the one thing i can do to increase my self worth and there are spiritual questions to ask ask even to meet a dead relative ask a dead relative if you have they have a message for you ask to meet your spirit guides questions on creativity uh, how can i improve my painting and drawing skills uh, please provide an image i could paint at this moment questions around fun how i would like a joyful dream to lift my spirits i would like to laugh in my dream tonight and even uh, questions on nightmares monster do you have a message for me chaser is there something you want from me how can i better deal with my anxiety about what is such and such topic so mahiel uh, are you uh, are you from holland are you from the netherlands that's I correct yes your accent so you yeah. grew up there right you grew up in the netherlands tell us a little bit how you got interested in the dream world i uh, um at the age of 10 my uh, father died and uh, uh my culture and my family wasn't uh, good at uh, dealing with uh, the grief that comes with uh, with such a death and so uh, for the 10 years after the unresolved grief really led to a a, a dense dark uh, uh, world so i was in the pit in my early 20s and by some fortunate uh, circumstances i stumbled upon the works of carl jung who gave me an uh, an clue on thinking differently about the world and especially uh that uh, dreams were uh, in a way portraying one's own inner territory and uh, and would also point to directions in life and there uh, at once my whole uh, uh dream life came uh, came into uh yeah flourish and uh, and and helped i reconnected with my father uh find a sense of purpose dream character started to tell me something uh, about uh, life that i could uh, could do better and life changed for the better and i've been just holding on to that uh, thread of uh, support or insight uh, in the dream so that was really uh, uh, where the whole thing uh, broke me open out of uh, a, a limited world that i uh, found myself in you know i come from a tradition in india uh, which uh, goes back thousands of years vedanta and uh, kashmir shaivism and many non dual traditions and of course yoga so in the in the those traditions we have a physical body of matter and energy we have a subtle body of mind intellect and ego and then we have a causal body which is usually called the body of bliss the personal soul the collective soul and the universal soul and in this scheme every day we go through three um, periods the waking state the dream state and then the deep sleep state but in my tradition the waking state is also a dream it's because you know a dream by definition is something that's uh transient ephemeral uh, ungraspable um and you know if i asked you what happened to your childhood you would say a dream no what happened to yesterday dream what happened to this morning dream what happened to 5 minutes ago a dream because it's not there anymore and so what happens to my words by the time you hear them they don't exist so every day reality is a lucid dream in a vivid now and just like any lucid dream you're aware that this is a dream happening right now what do you say to that well i uh, uh, i i i love the way you explain that and i think uh, indeed at uh, at the core uh, the consciousness flows through us and uh, modifies itself uh, based on our karma or uh, in jungian terms complexes or psychological disposition into a world 
At night or during our sleep, we call that world dream. Currently, we call that world waking life. Yet that world is, is uh, more or less to say is, is constructed in the same way. The nighttime dream is just a uh, different frequency than, uh, than this world. And so we can learn a lot about how the dream world is constructed uh, about uh, the, the, the psychological patterns in it and, and the way it is uh, actually uh, uh, created. Uh, about that uh, gives us insight into into how this world uh, is equally created. So I'm I'm somewhat on the same uh, page, I think. And so everything that we call everyday reality, whether it's our mind, intellect, or ego, or our physical body, or even the physical world, is just a modification of a fundamental reality which i think you just referred to as pure consciousness or just consciousness and that's where all experience occurs whether it's dream experience physical experience any experience but again in our tradition the deep sleep is actually the highest intelligence because it's non-local and deep sleep can actually give us a window to higher consciousness, to states like soul consciousness, cosmic consciousness, divine consciousness, and ultimately the source of all experience, which we call non-local reality. Please comment uh, what you think of this. Yes, I uh, uh, think that uh, um, we have these awareness practices. And so the more uh, you can become aware in the dream, it's a, it's a lucid dream. And, uh, uh, and in it, uh, you, you can learn a lot about how that world is created. And then beyond that, uh, you get into a an, an world that is, uh, uh, um, uh, is more built out of, out of light. So there are these different worlds. And I imagine that uh, the world of deep sleep is this uh, non-dual uh, light and uh, that there are just these different variations in, uh, in the day if this reality, then you have the dream reality, the, the light reality, and we circle through them. And even my bigger assumption is it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fractal of our life journey. Uh, we go into this reality, we go into the reality uh, after death, get into some other state, and then we'll cycle back into this reality. So I think that, that, that our day is a fractal of the larger way of with these different frequencies or, or states of uh, consciousness and death is therefore just a continuation of the dream we're already in right yeah in yeah. another frequency domain right and 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 therefore dreams are actually a, a somewhat a prep and this life too but dreams can be a preparation for death because in uh, in the dream we find ourselves in a world and that is so such a, a fundamental uh, first step because in, uh, uh, in the Western traditions, people have very often thought of a dream as a, as a movie that you watch or a letter that you get from mystery source X that you need to decipher. But the dream isn't a letter. It's the wrong metaphor. The dream is a world. And, and consciousness uh, manifests itself into, in, in worlds. And, uh, uh, and we find ourselves in that world at night and uh, then we can see how that world actually is co-created by our beliefs and thoughts. And uh, uh, then we learn the, the, the way that that world uh, uh, forms. A, a quick example, I was uh, recently running in a, in a dream and then I become lucid. It was like, oh my gosh, I'm in a dream. I stood in front of a house and, uh, and I uh, had, there was a, a, a wall and I thought, what if I uh, try to push through that wall? So I, uh, I did, and the stone wall uh, allowed me to push through it, and I could feel the stone around my arm. It was a, a magical uh, feeling, it was surprisingly. And then I thought, what if I uh, pull my arm back, but I don't want that? But it was very easy to pull the arm back. And uh, uh, something else happened, but that, that was the scene. And what it led me to, uh, to understand is that the world in dream responds to expectation. I expect that I can push through the wall and I can. And, if, uh, and then there's willpower. If I don't want it, 
I still can. So expectation over rules willpower. And that is uh, just a an, an, an psychological mechanism that also then works in this reality because these realities are created equally. And so if I believe that people don't like me, then my external environment start, start mirroring that. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, but it gets pretty close. And even if I don't want that, it will still do that. So as a therapist, for example, we're not going to work on, I want to be uh, liked and uh, repeat that, but we're going to work on the expectation. How can I expect that uh, maybe I expect people don't like me? How can I expect that people are neutral to me or that some people will like me? And then, uh, then things can change. I'm speaking to Machiel Clerk. He's a licensed mental health therapist, international speaker, dream worker, author, and social entrepreneur. While obtaining a master's degree in counseling psychology, he studied Jungian psychology. Machiel has been vocationally guided by his dreams, leading him uh, to create uh, or found the Jung Jungian Society of Utah, an online organization the young platform so you live in utah now right yes that's right so uh, you know this is a very practical book so i recommend it to everyone dream guidance connecting to the soul through dream incubation so you know in um, in uh, today's um, consciousness research people constantly ask this question about the heart problem, how does the brain, you know, which is only receiving electrochemical signals, how does it um, ultimately give us the experience of this world, you know? And people are really struggling with that. And I think they're struggling um, because it's the wrong question. Even the brain is part of the dream world. Your body is part of the dream world. Everything is a modified form of consciousness we accept that you know then your body is also a modified form of consciousness after all when you dream heart rate depending on the dream heart rate changes blood pressure goes up and down you're having a sexual dream you can even have an ejaculation etc that could only happen if the body and the mind and consciousness are one they're just the same thing otherwise i couldn't even lift my arm you know lifting my arm starts with a thought and this is a very very physical experience but the thought the consciousness the brain and the body and the physical world are all modifications of the same non-stuff if we go deep into the nature of reality then everything that we call physical actually disappears we're all made of the same non-stuff and it appears to be stuff that also thinks imagines and uh, and appears as mind body brain and the physical world would are you sympathetic to this this school of thought which is really non-dual you use the word earlier yes i i, I think uh, that uh, what you describe is uh... Uh, should be taught immediately uh, when people go to school at age six, because uh, uh, the consequence of that thought is that what we perceive is uh, to a big part uh, our own uh, world, and uh, and that it is kind of you could say there's an inner painter that paints a world around us based on uh, our karmic uh, disposition, and we can learn a lot about uh, how this world works, and instead of that people put that I put my world onto your world, we can we can learn to live differently because uh, we know there's not an objective reality, but a perceived reality coming all from that one same source, and that uh, and that will change uh, our life significantly. And that one same source is is non-local, beyond space time infinite, immortal, spaceless, dimensionless, formless, and therefore infinite with a, you know, fundamental. And if we understood that, then what we call our individual soul is like a little speck in that yeah. uh, ocean of consciousness. Yeah. 
I, I've always really liked uh, that story in, uh, in the Indian tradition of uh, uh, Vishnu sleeping uh, on the serpent and dreaming the world into being. And, uh, and somehow how I uh, have taken that is uh, the, the, the larger consciousness dreams this world, the galaxies, the planets, Earth, humans into being. But that stream, is, it's not a static world. It, it is an, it's a continuation. So we continue to be expressions of that, uh, that, that the dream of Shiva or the consciousness that just continues to pour itself into this moment. And so everything is in that way interconnected. Uh, and we're all in touch with this uh, uh, life creating power force that uh, that's an ongoing world creating uh, phenomenon. How, how do you see that? Yeah, even space time then are part of the dream world. So is your body, so is your brain part of the dream world. And when you're in a dream, of course, it's real. And then yep. after you wake up, you know, Wittgenstein, the German philosopher said, our life is a dream, we are asleep, but once in a while we wake up enough to know that we're dreaming. Yeah. Uh, so that was a very poignant expression. You mentioned Vishnu, there's another story of Vishnu, where you know you have this um, um, devotee of Vishnu, and he's praying to Vishnu, and so Vishnu suddenly shows up, and he says, uh, the devotee says to Vishnu, I'll do anything for you. Uh, what can I do for you? And so, you know, they're living in a, this, this whole thing is happening in a forest grove. And so Vishnu says, well, there's a stream down there. Can you go get me, uh, fetch me a glass of water, a jar of water? And so uh, this guy, uh, he says, sure. And he runs towards the stream, but then on the way, he meets a beautiful young girl and he forgets Vishnu. And he marries this girl and, you know, they have children and they have grandchildren and he has a huge clan. He becomes the chief of his tribe, etc. And then one day there's a big storm and everything is destroyed. Everything is destroyed. And the devotee finds himself back in the grove and Vishnu is there right before him, he says, did you get me my glass of water? <laughs> so basically, <laughs> the whole thing happened in a few seconds, but eons had passed. And this just tells us that actually space-time is part of the dream. It depends in the frequency domain you happen to be in. And time is therefore relative, not in the sense that, say, Einstein was talking about, but all time is relative, depending on the state of consciousness you're in. You know, we say, I was in love and time disappeared. I was in the carnival, had a great time. And, you know, I was at the dentist's office, time dragged, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, uh, and, so. and, and, and even uh, uh, at sleep, we go to bed, eight hours later, we wake up. Where did time go? Where did time go? That's beautiful. My very special guest has been uh, Machiel Clerk. And this very special book is called Dream Guidance, Connecting to the Soul Through Dream, in Dream Incubation. We went a little um, into our understanding of consciousness, which is my passion, and it seems yours too. But for our for everyone who's listening, this is a practical book. And, you know, you can start um, your dream journeys even today. By the way, Machiel, I communicate with my parents and my ancestors every night. I communicate uh, with some uh, masters, Tibetan masters, and some, you know, shamans, shamans, and healers. So everything you say is very, very, makes a lot of sense to me because... This is my journey now also. And uh, I actually look forward to even my death and what's beyond that. Uh, and uh, I think if everybody understood that life is a dream um, and also you can dream and you can wake up too. You know, Buddha said, mm -hmm. this lifetime of ours is transient as autumn clouds. 
to watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning in the sky, rushing by like a torrent down a steep mountain. It's a dream. And then, you know, when his disciple Ananda asked him, are you God, are you Messiah, this, that, and the other? He said, no. He said, who are you? And he said, I'm awake. So one of the functions of lucid dreaming is actually to wake up to our soul as well. Yeah, beautiful. I, um, uh, when you talked, I, I really wondered also if you uh, want to share, how do you do that to communicate with your ancestors and, uh, and the masters? Do you, do you set an intention before you go to bed? Do you encounter them spontaneously in the dream? Do you become lucid? Well, for me, now it's routine. I know that my physical body, every cell in my body, contains all my ancestors anyway. They're called mm -hmm. genes. You know, I can't even lift my hand without genetic activity. So they're here, right in my hand, in every cell of the body. And this body is a dream body. So what's the big deal? You know, I before I sleep, I go through a meditation ritual. And then, uh, as you said, I ask questions. But I also make requests. And uh, they show up. And believe it or not, once in a while, and this I'm saying this publicly right now, once in a while, I open my eyes and I can see the apparition right there. Mm. I see you. Yeah. And, and, you know, then I close my eyes because, you know, I realize that we are all ghosts anyway. You and I are also ghosts because by the time I perceive you, what I perceived has happened. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it's a microsecond or it's a few billion years ago. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I love that. That is, that. that is also at the heart of this notion of what I wrote in Dream Incubation, that this kind of uh, intelligence, ancestors, guides are available at night. And clearly you, uh, you also do a an, an ritual to invoke it. And, uh, and I think that is one way we can engage with dreams. And the other that we discussed today is it, it allows to explore the nature of reality. Yeah. And, uh, and then we can uh, move more freely and fulfilled through this uh, through this experience my very special guest Mahiel Clark check out the book dream guidance connecting to the soul through dream incubation thank you so much for joining me today thank you Deepak it was a delight <laughs>